This episode will review the purpose of the maternal serum AFP screening test during pregnancy, along with what types of results you can receive from this test. If you have received a screen positive or elevated ASP result, this episode will prepare you for next steps. For those of you who are new here, I am Kendra, founder of Alay Life and a board-certified genetic counselor who specializes in prenatal care. I produce informational videos about prenatal genetic testing and how to navigate unexpected news in pregnancy. If you do not want to miss a future video, press the subscribe button now. So what does AFP stand for? AFP stands for alpha fetoprotein. AFP is a protein produced by the fetal yolk sac and fetal liver. This protein crosses into the maternal bloodstream during pregnancy. What is the purpose of maternal serum AFP screening? This is a screening test performed on a blood sample from a pregnant person to determine if a pregnancy is at increased risk for certain fetal impairments, most commonly open neural tube defects. Neural tube defects are birth defects of the brain, spine, or spinal cord. Other possible causes of an elevated AFP are discussed later in this video. Further imaging and prenatal tests may be recommended if the AFP screening result returns abnormal. Who is offered maternal serum AFP screening? Speak to your OB provider to determine if this test is appropriate for you. Some providers offer this screening test to all pregnant people. Other providers do not routinely offer this screening test and instead rely on prenatal ultrasound for information about fetal development. This is because high quality second trimester ultrasound can detect the majority of pregnancies affected with open neural tube defects. First trimester ultrasound cannot detect the majority of affected pregnancies. When is maternal serum AFP screening performed during pregnancy? This screening test is typically performed between 15 weeks through 22 weeks, six days of pregnancy. However, some labs only perform this test up until 21 weeks and six days of pregnancy. You might be wondering, well, how accurate is a maternal serum AFP screening test? This test will detect 65 to 95% of pregnancies affected with open neural tube defects. This means that some affected pregnancies will not be detected by this test. For this reason, all pregnant people should be offered a second trimester ultrasound between 18 to 22 weeks in pregnancy to screen for neural tube defects and other fetal impairments. Receiving an abnormal AFP result does not mean a fetus is affected. False positive results can occur. In fact, many pregnant people who receive an abnormal AFP screening result deliver a healthy baby. To understand your results, it's helpful to review how the results are calculated. The AFP level in a pregnant person's blood is compared to the AFP level in a group of pregnant people with unaffected pregnancies at the same gestational age. The AFP results are reported in a measure called the multiple of the median, or MOM. Each lab has a cutoff value they use to determine if a patient's result is a screen positive or abnormal, or if the result is a screen negative. Many, but not all labs, use a cutoff value of 2.5 MOMs, which means if the AFP level is 2.5 MOMs or higher, the result is considered a screen positive or abnormal test result. So what types of results can you receive? As I mentioned, a screen positive result is possible, and this means that there may be an increased risk for a pregnancy to be affected with certain fetal impairments or pregnancy complications, which may include pregnancy loss, fetal growth restriction, and preeclampsia. Remember, this positive screening result does not mean a pregnancy is affected with a fetal impairment and does not mean that a pregnancy complication will definitively occur. Further imaging and testing may be recommended. The higher the AFP level, the greater the chance for a fetal impairment or pregnancy complication. The AFP level can range from under two multiples of the median to over 10 multiples of the median or MOMs. Screen negative results also occur in the majority of pregnancies. This result means that there is a low chance for a pregnancy to be affected with certain, but not all fetal impairments. A screen negative result does not guarantee an unaffected pregnancy. A second trimester ultrasound should still be performed between 18 to 22 weeks of pregnancy to screen for fetal impairments. 
Let's talk about what other factors might impact the AFP result in a pregnant person's blood. Labs use certain information about a pregnant person to calculate the AFP results. A pregnant person's race, their weight, whether they smoke cigarettes or not, whether their pregnancy is twins or triplets, and whether they take insulin for diabetes may all affect the AFP level. Therefore, the healthcare provider who orders this screening test must include the correct information for the lab to use to calculate the AFP results accurately. So what are other possible causes of an elevated or screen positive AFP results? Other fetal impairments, such as an abdominal wall defect or kidney disease, may cause a screen positive AFP result. There are other rare conditions in a fetus that can also cause this result, which will not be discussed here today. An elevated AFP level can also be seen in the case of a miscarriage or fetal demise, or can be caused by placental conditions. So what is the next step following a screen positive AFP result? All information that was submitted to the laboratory to perform the screening test should be reviewed for accuracy. False positive results can be caused by incorrect reporting of this information. If any information is incorrect, the lab should be contacted to recalculate the results. In most cases, an ultrasound is recommended to determine if a neural tube defect or other fetal impairment is present that would explain the elevated AFP result. Ultrasound may also be used to confirm the gestational age or pregnancy dating, to confirm if the fetal heart tones are present, and to confirm the number of fetuses, since all of these factors can impact the accuracy of the AFP result. You might wonder, well, how accurate is prenatal ultrasound in detecting an open neural tube defect or other fetal impairment? Detection of neural tube defects and other fetal impairments by prenatal ultrasound depends on many factors, including the size and location of the fetal impairment, the position of the fetus, the volume of amniotic fluid, a pregnant person's weight, as obesity decreases the detection rates on ultrasound, and the skill and equipment of the person performing the ultrasound matters. If the fetus can be well visualized on ultrasound, ultrasound can detect over 90% of pregnancies affected with an open neural tube defect or an abdominal wall defect. You might be wondering if there's any other test that is available to detect an open neural tube defect in a fetus. In some cases, a test called an amniocentesis may be offered. This test is typically offered if certain images of the fetal body cannot be seen clearly on ultrasound or depending on other factors. Amniocentesis is an optional test and is commonly performed after 16 weeks in pregnancy. This test is done by guiding a needle into the abdomen and uterus to collect a sample of amniotic fluid from around the fetus. An ultrasound is used to help the doctor safely insert the needle into the fluid. Amniocentesis has a less than 1% chance to cause a pregnancy loss. Other complications can occur from this test, such as bleeding, infection, and premature rupture of the membranes. Speak with a doctor who performs amniocentesis about these risks further. If an amniocentesis is performed, the AFP level can be measured in the amniotic fluid. If it is elevated, an additional enzyme is measured in the fluid called acetylcholinesterase. An elevated AFP level plus the presence of acetylcholinesterase in the amniotic fluid suggests the presence of an open neural tube defect or other fetal impairment, which may not be visualized on ultrasound. If you have received a screen positive AFP result, you are not alone. It is normal to feel worried, anxious, and stressed. You may find your mind racing ahead and thinking about all of the what ifs. I've created a video just for you with strategies to help you manage the feelings and emotions that arise after receiving unexpected news in pregnancy. For one-on-one -on -one support about your results, please visit alay-life.com. In closing, please support our community by liking and subscribing to this channel. I would love to hear from each of you. What was your experience with the maternal serum AFP screening test? Is there anything you wish your provider had shared with you about this test? Lastly, for free informational and support resources, check out my website at alay-life.com. With love and light, see you next time.